Hey guys, this is Aldoan Gaming. This is going to be another Dragoner Silent Gods video. In today's video, I want to show you a really fun team that uh, I have been working on for uh, quite a few hours, and I basically started working on that team last night. And that is a team that's gonna tackle the temporal vortex using a kind of a, I guess you could call it budget wild team. The reason I'm calling it budget is because I'm, I don't have Fora. Most of the most of the teams that are doing amazingly in uh, in Vortex usually require Flora as the main uh, as the main hero in there. But I'm actually only using two wild heroes in my team: the free legendary Erich, and then we do have Tononon, which we know she's arguably the best uh, epic single target damage dealer in the whole game. So. This is my team that I'm going to be using, and I guess the way that we're going to do this is I pre-recorded the run before. We're just going to play the run in the background, and then I'm going to, going to explain how this team actually works. And it's a little bit of an interesting one. It's a different one because I do have uh, at least one person in here that maybe people will be like, why is she even in the team? Okay, and that person over there is Akis, as you can see on the right on the screen, and then on the furthest left actually in the in the actual fight positioning so this team basically revolves around having everything be perfectly synced perfectly timed everything falling at the right time and i'm gonna show that at the end you just saw back to back bad rng of like both my attack penalties not landing but that is not a problem as long as it happens early on if this one happens towards the end it can mean just straight up the wipe of the team so when it comes to the temporal vortex and when we're talking about the stage four as we see over here the thing that we need to keep in mind is especially this uh, a we over here okay when the boss does that one he lands defense penalty as you can see that landed on us and you basically need either somebody that brings you debuff uh immunity such as like i don't know i think the ones that do it is, are Thea, but she's only for range people then you have catherine you know there's there's some other ones that actually do that or you can you can use the other option and that is of actually cleansing that debuff as soon as or as fast as it lands you can see i'm straight up cleansing it as soon as it lands and then i do everybody else's damage afterwards at the same time the way the way that i have this team set is that i have attack penalty or you know if it lands i basically have attack penalty on the boss for the whole fight and that's that's basically alternating be sold uh between a soul day and Rurbas to land that one. Then uh, the the DPS heroes in here are actually, like I said, Tonon on average, and a little bit for Akis. She's not gonna obviously, you know, she's not gonna do as much damage as everybody else, but she does bring some utility in there because of the fact that, like I said, she brings us the cleanse. But not only that, apart from bringing the cleanse, she has a passive that basically says. If the person that attacks has a debuff landed by her, they will do 10% less damage. It might not sound like a lot, but it can be helpful to, you know, get your team to push to the next level so you can actually hit the top damage, which I'm going to be showing with this team. So she brings that. And then at the same time, what I have her built in, she is the one that's built in the Brotherhood Spirit that you see that increased attack going up. So she's the one that's built in the Brotherhood Spirit that also brings the 15% increase attack for 10 seconds after she does her ultimate to everybody else in the team. Then uh, if you look a little bit at the timing, I guess let's watch the rotation right now. So first thing is Solde does the attack penalty before the first AWE and she also places the shield with her ultimate. So you see the shield is still there and because I landed it just before that, she also has the shield for this Mac. We still have the shield, which means that we can, you know, we can survive the hits. Then Frurbath comes with the attack penalty exactly before the boss does the first AWE, that one over there. So that way, you know, again, if everything lands and there's not some bad RNG, if everything lands, you have the attack penalty after every single hit. Then when it comes to the other part, I have them, uh, the DPS, I have them synced in such a way that I have Brotherhood Spirit up before I go and attack. Then I have the Witch's Remains, which is as, my, as uh, one of the defense penalty. I'm actually using both of them. So I have, uh, like you see over here, Cleanse. And Erich goes, Erich is the one that has Witch's Remains, and only after that 
Talon Lang goes, that's a little bit later, just to make sure that the Witch's Remains, uh, aka the defense penalty, is there before she goes and does the big smack, because she is the main DPS in this whole team. So if you don't have everything perfectly lined up, it might not work as well as you would like. Then you will notice also the fact that, again, I'm cleansing, I'm doing all the damage. You will notice the fact that the way that the defense penalty falls off, okay, so it falls off just about here, Frurbath goes, and because I have on him as well, let me say, just moved my <laughs> green screen a bit. But you see, because I have on Frurbath also the Crown of the Unclean, we basically have the other defense penalty. Obviously, if it lands, because it's a 75% chance, but we have the other defense penalty, so we can squeeze out a little bit more damage in between those times before we get the Witch's Remains from Arich again. So, you know, I worked for hours and hours. I tried to perfectly min-max it. I, I try to find the perfect balance between survivability, between damage, cleansing, landing all the stuff. You know, it's not easy, but I did manage to, to find this one over here. And obviously, like I said, at the end, I'm going to show you the skill timings and the exact builds that I have on everybody. But this one goes pretty well. As you can see, we survive a long time. OK, this team survives, survives a long time. And be because, you know, we have lots of survivability with the two attack penalties always being there. And also with the shields from Day. I chose to do this team because my wife, Ivy Gaming, said, you know what, build a Budget Wild team because you have Day." The reason why I'm saying that is this week, at least on my server, for this rotation, the uh, shields are boosted by 75%, okay? Healing is reduced, I think, by 25%, and then shielding is boosted by 75%. So my normal team was not working as well, even though it's like, you know, the, the boosted damage for this week, again, on my server, is the lightning damage, okay? So if you go and look over here, let me just back a bit out while they are fighting in the background. So it does say over here, this week, bosses take 30% more lightning jam damage, shield granted by allies are increased by 75%, and here healing reduced by 25%. So I'm basically mostly relying on the shields from Isolde because... Well, the healing from Frurbath is not, uh, you know, is not insane, but it does good enough job paired with a shield from Isolde that it actually keeps us going for the amount of time that you see that this team is going. Like, we're still going. We're still there. We're still in the find. We keep cleansing. We keep landing the damage. And yeah, it's not going to do some crazy numbers. It's not going to go like 30, 40 million because, again, without Flora, it's not as easy to do insane damage with Wild, but... Still, just having two wild people in here, it can do some pretty solid damage. The funny thing about this whole fight is after I did my team last night, okay, after I built it, I just went in there and like, you know, okay, it is what it is. I kept, I kept the damage. I kept the damage in there and I was like, okay, fine, I did 26 million. And then straight up after that, okay, as you see, it's all the dice, 25 million. We basically hit it. I think we're going to squeeze a few more hits in there to get to like 26 or something like that. Yep, we see we get close to, there we go, 26 million. So, you know, it's a little bit over, so that it doesn't make it maybe as RNG, but still, depending on when stuff lands, it might be RNG. So, that's the team, you see, 26 million, we're pretty fine. And yeah, I guess I'm pretty happy with the result, but I was mentioning the funny thing that happened straight up after, after that fight, I got my second legendary from the horn, okay? <laughs> I got the 20 on the horn, like, you know, three weeks back. I got the 20 on, on the horn and I got myself a replicas. And then I did go ahead and pull Felicity. Obviously, putting Felicity in the team made it a little bit easier, but I did not want to show you that team like that with Felicity. I wanted to show you this variation with Ekis because it's a bit different and maybe not too many people talk about it. So, first things first, let me show you the skill timings. So the way that I have them go is everybody will be on the 20 uh, second skill interval because everybody has to land their stuff at the right time. Then first one is a soul day, 14 seconds, basically before the boss does the AOE that lands defense penalty. Then the second one, uh, I guess second and third are going to be uh, Erich and Ekis. She comes in with the ultimate cleansing one debuff. And then Erich comes in there with a the five hitter and landing Witch's Remains because I do have that Witch's Remains on him. Then after that, two seconds later, just to make sure that all the hits from uh, Erich land and the defense penalty is there, then it's uh, Tonanon that goes in and smashes damage. The reason why I'm, I put two seconds is because those uh, five meteorites strike, you know, not all at once and that's it. They, can, they go over like, I think, one or two seconds period. So that's why I had two seconds extra timing for the ultimate just to make sure that's there. 
And then the last one, Fruitbath, I have him at 25.6 because that's the exact split second, you know, like half a second before the boss does the first smack, okay? So before the boss does the, this this hit over here, uh, where is it? Uh, this one, the wave breaking halberd. So before he does that first smack, we land the defense penalty, uh, the attack penalty, and hopefully the defense penalty. Now, when it comes to build, like I said, I have Ekis basically with Brotherhood Spirit, so it gives us more attack. I have enough accuracy so she lands uh, the debuffs because, like I said, when inflicting debuffs, on enemies reduces their damage dealt by 10% at the same time so you know this one helps a little bit of damage medication can go a long way and then after that I mostly went damage and I did give like a little bit of defense so they don't die earlier than my than my soul because this team fails when his soul they dies from that lightning strike okay so that's uh that's Ekis with like a Brotherhood spirit and then eyeball of the giant then the next one, let's go over to Fruitbath. Fruitbath is actually in the Ancestral Protection, so he soaks up some of the damage from his soul and everybody else because he's going to be pretty tanky. Again, I gave him Accuracy so he can land his attack penalty, and then I also gave him the Crown of the Unclean for a chance to land a defense penalty after the Witch's Remain wears off so we can have more defense penalty so we can squeeze in more damage, okay? And obviously gave him the Accuracy and as much defense as I could because his healing on the battle skill is 50% of his defense. So you want to have as much as you can. He's not going to be doing too much damage, so don't really care about that. <clears throat> then we have a soul day she is built basically with some accuracy enough accuracy to land the to land the uh, what you call the attack penalty and basically keep in mind i have this one okay i do have all the bonuses with attack with the elemental damage with the attack percent and also the accuracy in there which means that i only need instead of 280 i only need around 230 accuracy to land my debuff so this one's 235 i should be okay after that i squeezed in as much hp and defense as i could and basically you want to get as much HP as you can but also don't forget the defense because her shields that she places on the ultimate is 40% of her max HP okay so 14% of her max HP which means give her as much as you can but then the thing that I kind of like added at the end even though she was the she was the brotherhood spirit holder before I added for her build the radiance of blue oak it's I don't have ideal pieces okay it's like look at it flat 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 nothing interesting some good stuff in there some good stuff in there again crit damage doesn't do much the reason why i give her this one is because she's the one that takes so much damage from that lightning strike the single target hit that i want her to heal back up every time she does the ultimate so 20 percent of her health has healed can be massive and can keep her alive <clears throat> then we have average again average and talon are going to be in the gambler because they do several hits you want this one i think this one's actually the best one for vortex because they do a ton of hits so they're going to land the uh, good damage in there Again, he's with accuracy and then damage, but again, some survivability. The reason for the accuracy is because he has the Witch's Remain, so I want to land this one. This is really important. 60% defense penalty can be the difference between, you know, maybe this exact team as I'm showing you now, without the Witch's Remains, I don't think it's going to be able to do 25 million damage. So before people write this in the comments, oh, you cannot do it without that one, I know, okay? It's just, this is the team that I'm showing you and that I managed to build. And then him, like Eric, just straight up damage after that, you know, after he has the accuracy. And then uh, Tunnel on same principle. A little bit of defense, then as much damage as I could pump out. As much attack, I only need 80% crit rate because of her passive. She gains extra 20% crit rate. And then as much crit damage and attack as I can. And I do have her with the Arcane Music Box. The reason why I love this one so much is, first of all, when it's max it gives you 30 percent extra crit rate okay it makes it so much easier to push every other stat but not only that because we have a solde in the team that brings us the shields she will gain 20 percent bonus damage when they have a shield so she's going to do 20 percent more damage because of that shield from a solde so that comes just massive and obviously obviously a solde also brings defense in all battles so yeah, this one's a pretty fun team. I, I pretty like uh, I like it very much. But I kind of swapped to this one, like I mentioned, because, well, I got Felicity, so why not? You know, why not go with Felicity? Uh, let me just max it out. You know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm going to run this again. I'm going to run this team with Felicity. This team is basically... I'm ignoring the defense penalty, okay? I'm just straight up going in, smashing, smashing the boss to do as much damage as I can. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to run this team and I'm going to show you the difference of actually having three wild people in the team. Like, honestly, I'm not sure you'd necessarily need Felicity. If you have somebody like a Foley slash Refi, which is her name now, 
if they are scrolled oh yeah keep in mind everybody scrolled okay every single person in my team is scrolled that's something to keep in mind so i'm gonna run this team and i'm gonna show the damage at at the end to see without Akis, you know which is like i said a more budget version but by having three uh wild people in the team i wish i had enough scrolls to scroll fully because i would like to show you with with her because you know felicity is a legendary so it's not as relatable but yeah i don't have the scrolls for fully to show you that anyway we're gonna i'm gonna run this till the end then we're gonna come right back and i'm gonna show you the damage so see you in a bit Okay, so we're back towards the end, but I had a little bit of bad RNG where I did not land my attack penalty with floor bots. So, you know, this team could have gone a bit more. It could have gone to maybe like 30 million. <clears throat> I don't know. I know I did like 29 million last night. But anyway, it still did a lot better. As you can see, the difference between having another wild hero, it did almost 28 million damage and it was a bit faster. Uh, it was a bit faster, like we die earlier because obviously we're lacking the cleansing and whatnot, but still it was uh you know it still did pretty well but anyway i think i'm gonna save this for today because uh or i might just redo it redo it anyway this is gonna be it for the video today guys i hope you enjoyed it one last thing that i think i forgot to mention keep in mind this exact positioning okay you want to have one person if you have the melee Ekis on this side the other one on the other side because the healing from uh what's his name Frurbas. see the the nexus so he's gonna be able to heal till over here and the same thing with the Soldate's shield, she's going to be able to place the shield till over there. The only thing that Ekis does not gain is the shield, okay? This, the, sorry, the defense up because she just does it around her. So that's really important to keep in mind the positioning. But anyway, this is going to be it for the video today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it gives you some ideas of how you can build your teams in here. Obviously, if you had somebody like an Adolphus in here, that could be really useful as well because Adolphus brings some extra shields as well. So maybe you have a Soldan and Adolphus and don't have Frurbas. You might still be able to work around with that because you would have so much shielding and healing going on, especially with this bonus right now, that you should be easily be able to bring like three wild in there to just smash the boss. But anyway... This is going to be it for today, guys. Thank you all for watching. As always, if you do enjoy my content, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next, and I'm going to see you on the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys.